It's been a tough election year for Louisiana Democrats. Governor John Bell Edwards, who's a Democrat, uh, term limited, uh, he could not run. Jeff Landry, MAGA Republican, uh, he won. Uh, many thought that race was going to go to uh, a runoff. It did not. He won the majority of votes uh, in that particular jungle primary. Uh, Republicans also will have a supermajority in, uh, in the House and the Senate. Uh, they're winning all across the state. There have been a lot of uh, cries for my next guest to resign. Katie Bernhardt heads the Louisiana Democratic Party. Uh, glad to have you here. You've got three critical races tomorrow. Uh, we just had one of your candidates on for Secretary of State. We had your treasurer candidate, candidate on yesterday. Um, what in the world, what is going on in a state uh, where you have uh, the second largest concentration of black folks in the country? Uh, you can't get them to come out and vote. What's going on with your party? Well, one, we have a lot of uh, voter apathy this year, and it's been very indicative in the number of people we've seen coming out to vote. Um, a big part of that is lack of investment in our field operations and our GOTV efforts. Um, we have to up that, but we also have to tell people that it is each of our responsibility to get people out to vote. All of us need to come together and, and work to get voters out across the state. Um, I, I wish I could say it was a simple problem and a simple solution, but uh, money does help. Uh, there has been a shortage of funding for our candidates this cycle. I'm very proud that we fielded a, sl a statewide slate of candidates, but we also have to all come together to work hard to get our candidates out. And that has been a real struggle this year uh, in particular. Uh, I'll say when we had John Bell Edwards on the ticket, we had about $9.8 million uh, come through the party for GOTV efforts. And um, we've had less than a million this cycle um, contributed by those statewide candidates, which is uh, I think a big part of us not having the turnout that we need to see. Although but as, turnout across the board has been uh, has been very low and, and troublesome. But uh, you're the party chair. Uh, did you not see uh, this was coming? Uh, if you're if you're tracking uh, fundraising from the end of the 2022 midterm elections up to present day, uh, was was the signal being blared? I mean, you've got a Democrat who's in the White House. Uh, you've got Democrats who control uh, the United States Senate. Uh, you've got Cedric Richmond, who is a, a critical advisor to the president. You've got Congressman Troy Carter, who's on your executive committee. Uh, so what happened here? Everyone knew John Bell Edwards couldn't run again. And also, what did he do? A lot of energy was spent by Democrats to target a fellow Democrat uh, in the New Orleans area. So what were your Democrats doing uh, and who was saying, hey, we're going to need money if we're going to try to win and keep Republicans from completely controlling the state? Well, that's a that's a multi-part question there. Obviously, we have wonderful leadership um, within our party. I think we're very fortunate to have um, our senior advisor to the DNC uh, and Cedric Richmond, Congressman Carter, uh, representing us on the federal level. I'm very uh, proud of the work they do and, and their contributions to our party. I think that it was a complicated election year. I think that we had Sean Wilson at the top of the ticket, who is clearly a very, very qualified candidate for governor. But uh, the funding from within state was just simply not going to be there in the primary, even even, even John Bell Edwards struggled in state uh, in his primary elections. The money needed to come nationally, and that was a real struggle. Um, look, Sean Wilson got in uh, with less than a year on the, the, um, the clock, and that is a struggle to begin with, right? We had someone that had been preparing for many, many years to run for governor and Jeff Landry. So we were behind the clock, and we worked tirelessly to get someone to run for governor. Um, it was not an easy lift. It was not an easy lift to get people to run statewide uh, in the conditions that we have in Louisiana right now. But I'm grateful that uh, the people that stepped up to run did run, and they're working hard across the state. Uh, we do need people to contribute to our statewide candidates. I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm confused. I, I'm, again, if, if, um, if everyone knew that John Bell Edwards couldn't run again, so you had four years to find somebody, why was it so hard to find somebody to run for the number one office in the state. I mean, I think there's a lot of reasons for that, right? One, it's a difficult job. Also, uh, the fact that we also tend to go back and forth. We go Republican, Democrat. Uh, and people did not want to run in the race that we had uh, with Jeff Landry running for many years uh, with a whole lot of money. Uh, he was very well equipped for this and very well prepared for this. Uh, we were behind on that before we ever got started, and we knew it. 
but we did have Sean Wilson step up. And like I said, I'm very, very grateful he did. He was a tremendously qualified candidate, uh, definitely had the best resume of the bunch and would have been a great administrator for the state. Um, but that doesn't mean that all the money comes right away. And it doesn't mean that the national money comes. Some of the things that national donors are looking for is head to head polls with us winning, which is very hard to do when you, you get in as late as he did. Um, do, when you look at how poorly, not just when it came to uh, one race, but multiple races, normally when that happens, heads have to roll. People have been calling for you to step down. Uh, after tomorrow's runoff, um, are you going to quit? Are you going to resign and bring in new leadership? Uh, because um, I, I hear everything that you're saying uh, but it still boggles my mind to have the number of African-Americans in your state, the second largest concentration of black voters in the country, no, uh, having no apparatus to turn those folks out. The reality is if you don't get significant black turnout, no Democrat is going to win. Uh, and then for Republicans to take control of the entire state apparatus under your watch, um, why would folks have faith that you could lead them in 2024? Well, that's a multi-part question too there. But I will say, one, I, I'm not going anywhere and I'm not quitting. And I think anyone who knows me knows that, I, that I'm not quitting. Um, more importantly, we have a great apparatus here at the party, but it's not a free apparatus. Uh, we have great mechanisms in place to turn out Democratic voters. Again, it's not free. We got three million people voting in the state of Louisiana, or we should. They don't all vote. But we are not going to be able to reach each of those voters with the message that we have without money. And we need to have all of our people working uh, to get voters out. Right. This but but, but so how do you get it? So, so how do you get it? You mean, you're the state chair. That's your job. I, look, I, I mean, your job, your job is to figure out how to go get the money. OK, well, how do you do it? Job is to make sure that we have a solid apparatus for our candidates to plug into and to utilize. And we do have that. And I'm very proud of that. One of the things that we've done, I mean, we had, I think, 19 organizing meetings every Monday uh, for everyone who wants to be part of this movement and to get people out to vote. We've had um, dozens of churches we visited. We have over 22 partner organizations we're working with. We have I got it. I got volunteer it. apparatus. I I'm confused. I'm confused because you said... You said we have a great apparatus, but in order for us to use the apparatus, we need money. So, which means that, fine, you got apparatus, but you got to raise money. Again, it, party chair, look, I've covered politics my, my entire life. At the end of the day, if you ain't got money, uh, all you got is a whole bunch of hot air. So the question is, if, you, if you're saying it was just so hard to raise money, why should Democrats in Louisiana have faith in you as a party chair if... The, looking at the election results this year, I don't care if you're in a local, in a county uh, or a state, these were horrible results. Absolutely. So, one, we had the best fundraising year in a non-election year in party history last year uh, under my leadership and under me doing the fundraising uh, and basically just me. We did not have a professional fundraiser. We did not have a finance director. That It, it was me calling people, me hosting events, and, and me going to large donors and getting those contributions. Uh, the issue here now is when you have a coordinated campaign, which is what funds the GOTV effort, that is a contribution from our statewide candidates and other candidates across the state. And again, and John Bo Edwards contributed nearly $10 million to that effort when he ran for governor. That amount of funding was not there for those candidates this cycle. The coordinated campaign is a tool used by candidates. And those candidates that are running right now have not gotten the investment they need to utilize that mechanism. How much, uh, how much did John Bell Edwards raise this year? I'm just curious. How much did he raise? I don't raise know how much John Bell has raised this year. I know how much he raised for his governor's race. No, no, I got you. But I'm saying that, but okay, again, again, this is sort of, if you're Governor John Bell Edwards, and Democrats put you in office, and he only won by 30,000 votes last time. Did he help your party out this year? So John Bell Edwards has, has helped our party. Um, he, he has been uh, someone who's been very supportive. Now, is how, he a How much did he raise? I mean, did he raise... I'm, I'm just, I mean, I'm just being straight. Listen, did he raise money for the Louisiana Democratic Party in this year's election cycle? And if so, how much? Yeah. He did not directly raise money. Okay, so so so, but so, isn't that a pro? Isn't that a problem that the sitting governor, who's going out, who's a Democrat, 
didn't raise money, it, so it leaves the impression that, hell, what the hell? I'm out. I don't care about the party. I mean, you use the power of the incumbency uh, to do that. So sounds to me like you, you had absolute two hands tied behind your back when the sitting governor, who is a member of your party, wasn't out there raising money for the rest of the party. Well, I also know that I'm not here to speak for the governor or for any of his actions, but I will say he supported our candidates directly. And I want everyone to support our candidates directly. Well, I'm sorry, when you support. say support directly, does that mean money or does that mean endorsements? Uh, that means endorsements, but also fundraisers. So I know he hosted a, a series of fundraisers for Sean Wilson, uh, immediately endorsed him, and, and as well for our attorney general's candidate and um, for our treasurer's candidate. So, okay, I... I Again. And I don't think the burden is on any one person. And that, that's why I'm saying we have to come together. There's been a lot. No, no, the, 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 to there's me, been a, a lot of talk, but a lot of action is needed here. I know. I understand that. But bur but the burden's on leadership. And um, and, and and look, I, I, I've been in and around the campaign since I was seven. Uh, my parents worked on campaigns, ran phone banks. Uh, I stood outside of polling places when I was nine and 10 years old, handed out stuff. Uh, so, frankly, I've lived and breathed this for 40 years. Uh, they've, worked, they've, been poll, they've worked on polls, been precinct judges, all that sort of stuff. So you name it, I've seen it. And, and, and what I'm still just confused by, I, I'm confused by having a Democrat who's sitting in the governor's mansion, the power of incumbency, uh, and knowing full well you're running against a MAGA Republican who has higher aspirations. Yes, he raised a lot of money, uh, but again, that was just this inability to, to really uh, rally folks around. And so I'm still asking, if, 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 if I'm in Louisiana, my grandparents, maternal grandparents, born and raised in Louisiana, and if I'm, if I'm in Louisiana and I'm sitting here looking at the results, I'm going, I ain't got faith in the leadership. I need new leadership to figure this thing out. So if you don't win races tomorrow, what are you going to do? Because I'm from, I know what it feels like being in a state uh, where Republicans have complete control, being a native of Texas. And so right now, Republicans have complete control of Louisiana. So what we are doing right now is building a bunch of candidates and the same thing we've been doing for several years, but it is a process and it takes people all working together. And I'm glad for the people we do have. We have a tremendous leadership uh, within our party. We have some great leaders uh, up and down our uh, executive committee and in our state central committee that are working across the state. We also overcame the challenge of not having legislative races in most of our majority minority seats. That was a tremendous burden for us this cycle. Uh, we did not have that issue four years ago, and that's something that um, has definitely affected us. Baton Rouge and Orleans Parish had very, very few uh, legislative races this cycle. Um, that is fortunate for, for those uh, that sit in those seats. They didn't have to run campaigns, but it's very uh, detrimental to the overall ticket because that, that's a bunch of people that are not working to get their constituents out that would also vote for the other people on the ballot. Uh, we saw that uh, very, very clearly in Orleans. We had no Senate races in Orleans. We only had two House races in, in all of Orleans Parish, uh, which was a tremendous uh, impact on the um, on the voter turnout in Orleans. Was it also was you was it a mistake for the governor and other prominent Democrats in Louisiana to target a progressive Democrat? Uh, who crushed the competition. I mean, she won with 67% of the vote. I would think everybody who voted for her opponent got egg on their face by wasting all of that time, energy, and money uh, when clearly the voters in that district wanted her. Again, that sort of energy, to me, takes away from the other critical races. Was that a mistake by your fellow Democrats to target one of your own? Uh, I think that that's just an inevitability in our party right now. The way our districts are drawn, we have packed Democrats into um, a, as few a districts as humanly possible. And, um, have, and, well, and that's because Republicans have been con in control of redistricting. For, for many years. I and mean, we had some great uh, leaders who also serve in party leadership who, who tried very hard to make sure black voters were not disenfranchised uh, even more than they have been historically. Um, but those efforts were not successful because the Republicans controlled um, the legislature during this redistricting cycle that we went through. Uh, we are so optimistic that the courts will deem those maps unconstitutional 
and we will um, we will have another shot at that. We we stood to pick up um, several seats in both the House and the Senate uh, had those maps been drawn differently. Uh, not to mention our congressional maps, which um, we still have some optimism where we'll get fair representation there on the federal level. Uh, last question, um, and I sort of asked it earlier, but I'll ask it again. Uh, you said you're not going anywhere. Why should a Democratic voter in Louisiana have faith in you to remain as party chair? Well, I think that anyone who's been involved and not sitting on the outskirts that has been directly involved knows exactly how hard we have worked and what we are doing to build a long-term successful Democratic Party here in Louisiana. And I encourage all of the chatter, uh, all of the conversations that are having uh, to, to cease the talking and to join in the efforts. Uh, we have a whole lot of uh, work that needs to be done, and we have a lot of ways to plug you in. Like I said, we've had about 20 weekly meetings uh, thus far since this election cycle got started and uh, and would be very, very welcoming to anyone who wants to get involved uh, and be part of the solution here to get more Democrats elected uh, statewide and to start building the bench and getting ready for the elections that we have um, in 2024. All right, Katie Bernhardt, uh, we appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. We appreciate it. Tell your friends and family to go vote in Louisiana.